Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in the Gospel of Matthew, and we are in Matthew chapter 3, and uh, actually Matthew chapter 2, and we resume our study in verse 12. We left off in verse 12, but I do have a little bit of unfinished business to attend to. So get your Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 2. We'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There you can do what we're going to do today, and that's study the Bible with me, verse by verse, using my audio Bible messages. Only there you choose which series going through the Bible you want. There's teaching going back over 33 years, that it's all archived for you, three complete series, almost four. And uh, so you choose the series, you choose the book of the Bible, the chapter, click and listen. It's that simple. Bring your Bible. That's all you need at the thebibleversebyverse.com. <clears throat> okay, hopefully your Bible is open right now, and let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's begin reading in Matthew chapter 2. Verse 11. Let's read 11 and 12 together. And when they were come into the house, talking about the wise men, they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So God was protecting his son and will protect him until it is time for Jesus to die and pay for our sins on the cross. He will not die one second before that. No matter how many people wanted him dead, and the religious leaders did. They won't be able to touch him. And God's promises protect us as well if we are Christians. His promises to protect us are true, are real, and they will work for as long as he wants us here on earth. The Bible says that no weapon formed against us Christians will prosper. And God says when, when our enemies come in like a flood, he will raise up a standard against them. Always remember this, as a Christian, no bad thing, no bad person can hurt you and I unless God allows it. And nothing can kill us unless God allows it. The Bible says that there is a time to die, and God is the one, the only one, who decides when that time will be for each one of us. <clears throat> 13. And when they de were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise. Take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Egypt was a long way from Bethlehem. And for reasons known only to God, he did not simply kill Herod and Herod's soldiers to protect his son. But rather, for reasons we don't know, he sent the Holy Family down to Egypt. Not convenient. Not the easiest thing. But it was God's choice. He could have done anything to protect his son. I suppose that Joseph could have said, 
How about doing this the easy way, Lord? There are many things that God could have done. But yet God chose to use natural, normal means to protect his son. The family had to pack up like any other family. And they had to move to a different country. And of course, the father could have simply made the Holy Family invisible and protected Jesus that way. He could have just beamed them over to Egypt if he wanted to do that, like he did with Philip the Evangelist in the book of Acts. But most of the time, God does things by working through normal, natural, earthly things, which is why we should pray and also use common sense. Because God works through common sense. And no doubt this was inconvenient. But believe it or not, sometimes God wants us to be inconvenienced. If he allowed his son to be inconvenienced. If he allowed Mary and Joseph to be inconvenienced. Then we should not expect smooth sailing all the time as Christians either. Or think that if we don't have it, then somehow we must be out of God's will. Not necessarily the case. 14. <clears throat> Let's read 14 and 15 together. <clears throat> when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and escaped or departed down into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Well, there we go again. Another Old Testament Bible verse, an Old Testament prophecy that was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the idea of him going down to Egypt as a baby or as, a, as an infant, to toddler probably, and then coming back out of Egypt eventually fulfilled Old Testament prophecies concerning the Messiah. But the thing that I want you to notice in these two verses is that Jesus and family stayed in Egypt. It says, until Herod was dead. He thought he was such a big shot. You know, he had, the, he had all those soldiers at his command. He had all the power. He, his, his word was obeyed. Whatever he decreed was carried out. He felt like a big shot. But when you're dealing with God, there are no big shots. And the enemies of God, like Herod, are nothing more than a temporary flash in the pan. They come, they talk smart, they boast against Jesus. They mock the word of God. And then they die and then they go to hell. Nothing but a flash in the plan, pan. Meanwhile, Jesus and the word of God continue on as they have since eternity past. So I say keep living for Jesus and keep living the word of God. And put up with the bumps along the way and know that in the end, you will finish on top. 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly angry and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all its borders from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. King Herod had to go to plan B because the wise men, with the help of God, didn't cooperate with his plot to kill Jesus. They didn't come back and tell him where Jesus was. So Herod simply had to go with plan B. A little inconvenient to this madman, but to a hell-bound moral reprobate like Herod, really... Not, not a big deal. See, since he didn't know 
which child was the Messiah? He would simply murder in cold blood every child that he could find. 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Rachel here refers to the mothers of Israel. Rachel is symbolic of all the mothers of those little ones who were snatched out of their mother's arms or out of their cribs and murdered by a king who worshipped himself and wouldn't let anything stop him from pleasing him. Well, he stopped pleasing himself when he died. Verse 19, but when Herod was dead, and there you have it, right there. He did all these horrible things, murdered all these innocent little children, plus his own sons, plus one of his wives, I think I read, that he murdered too because he was paranoid of her taking his throne. He was just a crazed maniac, full of sinful self. And when somebody is that full of sinful self, you better watch out, because they will tromp on anybody that gets in their way. But it says, when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. What an amazing string of supernatural experiences by Mary and Joseph and Jesus, of course. And here's another one. Again, this one came to Joseph, the leader of the family. Mary was the mother of God. The child Jesus was God. And yet God had respect unto the leader of the home, Joseph, because he was the husband and the father, stepfather. At any rate, he gets a message directly from God, verse 20, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead who sought the young child's life. It says that Herod was dead. And just to show you how wicked this guy really was, This will give you an idea. If you, if you had any doubts in your mind about the wickedness of this man, he knew that no one would weep when he died. He knew no one. He didn't have a friend in the world, and he knew it. And so his final command was to have many of his assistants murdered at the very moment of his own death so that there would at least be some crying and mourning in the land when he was dead. And believe it or not, that command was carried out. And here is, here is where we can see God's fingerprints. Those who were killed, his assistants, when Herod died, would also have killed the child Jesus if they had found him. So God used the sinful self-centeredness of King Herod to eliminate would-be murderers and make things safe for his son. 21. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. Notice that the angel never told Joseph to take Mary and Jesus back to Bethlehem. Joseph seems to have assumed that that's where the angel intended to, uh, that they should go or God intended that they should go, because that's where they came from. But he never said that. He was not real specific. He just said, take the family back to Israel. We need to pay attention to the white parts of the pages of Scripture and do not write anything in that God has not said. Never read between the lines of Scripture and equate that with Scripture. I'm out of time. If you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, pray for God's word, Click the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. We'll pick it up right here next time.